Session 36, March 10, 1981. I am Ra. I greet you in the love and light of the infant creator we communicate now. Question. In previous communications, you have spoken of the mind-body-spirit complex totality. Would you please give us a definition of the mind-body-spirit complex totality? Ra. This is a dimension in which time does not have sway. In this dimension, the body, mind, spirit, in its eternal dance of the present, may be seen in totality. And before the mind-body-spirit complex, which then becomes a part of the social memory complex, is willingly absorbed into the allness of the one creator. The entity knows itself in its totality. This mind-body-spirit complex totality functions as, shall we say, a resource for what you perhaps would call the higher self. The higher self, in turn, is a resource for examining the distillation of third-density experience and programming further experience. This is also true of densities 4, 5, 6, and with the mind-body-spirit complex totality coming into consciousness in the course of seventh density. Question. Then would the mind-body-spirit complex totality be responsible for programming changes in catalyst during a third-density experience of the mind-body-spirit complex, so that the proper catalyst would be added, shall we say, as conditions for the complex change during third-density experience? Ra, this is incorrect. The higher self, as you call it, that is, that self which exists with full understanding of the accumulation of experiences of the entity, aids the entity in achieving healing of the experiences which have not been learned properly, and assists, as you may indicate it, in further life experiences programming, as you may call it. The mind-body-spirit complex totality is that which may be called upon by the higher self aspect, just as the mind-body-spirit complex calls upon the higher self. In the one case, you have a structured situation within the space-time continuum, with the higher self having available to it the totality of experiences which have been collected by an entity and a very firm grasp of the lessons to be learned in this density. The mind-body-spirit complex totality is as the shifting sands and is in some part a collection of parallel developments of the same entity. This information is made available to the higher self aspect. This aspect may then use these projected probability-possibility vortices in order to better aid in what you would call future life programming. Question. Out of the Seth material, we have a statement in which Seth says that each entity here on Earth is one part or an aspect of the higher self or oversoul, which has many aspects or parts in many dimensions, all of which learn lessons which allow the higher self to progress in a balanced manner. Am I understand from this that there are many experiences similar to the one which we experience in the third density, which are governed by a single higher self? Ra, the correctness of this statement is variable. The more in balance an entity becomes, the less the possibility or probability vortices may need to be explored in parallel experiences. Question, do I understand from this then that the higher self or oversoul may break down into numerous units if the experience is required to what we would call simultaneously experience different types of catalyst and then oversee these experiences. Ra, this is a statement we cannot say to be correct or incorrect due to the confusions of what you call time. True simultaneity is available only when all things are seen to be occurring at once. This overshadows the concept of which we speak. The concept of various parts of the being living experience of very natures simultaneously is not precisely accurate due to your understanding that this would indicate that this was occurring with true simultaneity. This is not the case. The case is from universe to universe, and parallel existence can then be programmed by the higher self, given the information available from the mind-body-spirit complex totality regarding the probability or possibility vortices of any crux. Question. Could you give an example of how this programming by the higher self would then bring about education through parallel experiences? Ra, perhaps the simplest example of this apparent simultaneity of existence of two selves, which are in truth one self at the same time space as this. The oversoul as you call it, or higher self, 
seems to exist simultaneously with the mind-body-spirit complex which it aids. This is not actually simultaneous, for the higher self is moving to the mind-body-spirit complex as needed from a position in the development of the entity, which would be considered in the future of this entity. Question. Then the higher self operates from the future as we understand things. In other words, my higher self would operate from what I consider to be my future. Is this correct? Ra, from the standpoint of your space-time, this is correct. Question. In that case, my higher self would have a very large advantage in knowing what was needed, since it would know, as far as I am concerned, what was going to happen. Is this correct? Ra, this is incorrect, in that this would be an abrogation of free will. The higher self aspect is aware of the lessons learned through the sixth density. The progress rate is fairly well understood. The choices which must be made to achieve the higher self as it are in the provenance of the mind-body-spirit complex itself. Thus, the higher self is like the map in which the destination is known. The roads are very well known. These roads being designed by intelligent infinity working through intelligent energy. However, the higher self aspect can program only for the lessons and certain predisposing limitations if it wishes. The remainder is completely the free choice of each entity. There is the perfect balance between the known and the unknown. Question. I'm sorry for having so much trouble with these concepts, but they are very difficult, I'm sure, to translate into our understanding and language. Some of my questions may be rather ridiculous. But does this higher self have some type of vehicle like our physical vehicle? Does it have a bodily complex? Ra, this is correct. The higher self is of a certain advancement within sixth density going into the seventh. After the seventh has been well entered, the mind-body-spirit complex becomes so totally a mind-body-spirit complex totality that it begins to gather spiritual mass and approach the octave density. Thus, the looking backward is finished at that point. Question. Is the higher self of every entity of a sixth density nature? Ra, this is correct. This is an honored duty of self to self as one approaches seventh density. Question. Let me be sure that I understand this then. We have spoken of certain particular individuals. For instance, we were speaking of George Patton in a previous communication. Then his higher self at that time of his incarnation, here is George Patton about 40 years ago, was of sixth density. Is this correct? Ra, this is correct. We make note at this time that each entity has several beings upon which to call for inner support. Any of these may be taken by any entity to be the mind-body-spirit complex totality. However, this is not the case. The mind-body-spirit complex totality is a nebulous collection of all that may occur held in understanding. The higher self itself, a projection or manifestation of mind-body-spirit complex totality, which then may communicate with the mind-body-spirit during the discarnate part of the cycle of rebirth or during the incarnation, may communicate if the proper pathway or channels through the roots of mind are opened. Question. These channels would then be opened by meditation, and I am assuming that the intense polarization would help in this. Is this correct? Ra, this is partially correct. Intense polarization does not necessarily develop in the mind-body-spirit complex. The will or need to contact the oversoul. Each path of life experience is unique. However, given the polarization, the will is greatly enhanced and vice versa. Question. Let me take as an example of one you said was called Himmler. We are assuming from this that his higher self was of the sixth density, and it was stated that Himmler had selected the negative path. Would his higher self then dwell in a sixth density negative type of situation? Can you expand on this concept? Ra. There are no negative beings which have attained the oversoul manifestations which is the honored duty of the mind-body-spirit complex totality, of late sixth density as you would term it in your time measurement. These negatively oriented mind-body-spirit complexes have a difficulty which is our knowledge has never been overcome. For after fifth density graduation wisdom is available, 
but must be matched with an equal amount of love. This love light is very, very difficult to achieve in unity when following the negative path and during the earlier part of the sixth density. Society complexes of the negative orientation will choose to release the potential and leap into the sixth density positive. Therefore, the oversoul, which makes its understanding available to all who are ready for such aid, is towards the positive. However, the free will of the individual is paramount, and any guidance given by the higher self may be seen in either the positive or negative polarity, depending upon the choice of a mind-body-spirit complex. Question. Then using Himmler as an example, was his higher self at the time he was incarnate in the 1940s a six-densitive, positively-oriented higher self? Ra, this is correct. Question. Was Himmler in any way in contact with his higher self at that time when he was incarnate during the 1940s? Ra, we remind you that the negative path is one of separation. What is the first separation is the self from the self. The one known as Himmler did not choose to use its ability of will and polarization to seek guidance from any source but its conscious drives, self-chosen in life experiences, and nourished by previous biases created in other life experiences. Question. Well, then let's say that when Himmler reaches sixth density negative, would he realize that his higher self was positively oriented and for that reason make the jump from negative to positive orientation? Ra, this is incorrect. The sixth density negative entity is extremely wise. It observes the spiritual entropy occurring due to the lack of ability to express the unity of sixth density, thus loving the Creator and realizing at some point that the Creator is not only self, but other self is self. This entity consciously chooses an instantaneous energy reorientation so that it may continue its evolution. Question. Then the sixth density entity, who has reached that point in positive orientation, may choose to become what we call a wander and move back. I am wondering if this ever occurs with a negatively oriented sixth density entity. Do any ever move back as wanders? Ra. One of the negatively polarized entity has reached a certain point in the wisdom density. It becomes extremely unlikely that it will choose to risk the forgetting for this polarization is not selfless, but selfish, and with wisdom realizes the jeopardy of such wandering. Occasionally a sixth density negative negative becomes a wander in an effort to continue to polarize towards a negative, and this is extremely unusual. Question. Then what is the mechanism that as unusual sixth density entity would wish to gain to polarize more negatively through wandering? Ra. The wanderer has the potential of greatly accelerating the density whence it comes in to progress its evolution. This is due to the intensive life experience and opportunities of the third density. Thusly, the positively oriented wanderer chooses to hazard the danger of any of the forgetting in order to be of service to others by radiating love of others. If the forgetting is penetrating, the large amount of catalyst in third density will polarize the wanderer which much greater efficiency than shall be expected in the higher and more harmonious densities. Similarly, the negatively oriented wander dares to hazard the forgetting in order that it might accelerate its progress and evolution in its own density by serving itself in third density, by offering to other selves the opportunity to hear the information having to do with negative polarization. Question. Are there any examples of six density negatively polarized wanders in our historical past? Ra, this information could be harmful. We withhold it. Please attempt to view the entities about you as part of the Creator. We can explain no further. Question, it is very difficult at times for us to get more than a small percentage of understanding of some of these concepts because of our limitations of awareness but I think that some meditation on the information from today will help us in formulating some questions about these concepts. Ra, may we ask for any brief queries before we leave this instrument? Question, I'll just ask one short one before we close. Can you tell me what percentage of the wanderers on earth today have become successful in penetrating the memory block and have become aware of who they are and finally 
Is there anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable or improve the contact? Ra, we can approximate the percentage of those penetrating intelligent their status. There is between 8 and 1 half and 9 and 3 quarter percent. There is a large percentile group of those who have a fairly well-defined, shall we say, symptomology indicating to them that they are not of this, shall we say, insanity. This amounts to a bit over 50% of the remainder. Nearly one-third of the remainder are aware that something about them is different. So you see, there are many gradations of awakening to the knowledge of being a wanderer. We may add that it is the middle and first of these groups that this information we shall, we say, makes sense. This instrument as well, the resting place, is somewhat deleterious in its effect upon the comfort of the dorsal side of this instrument's physical vehicle, and we have mentioned this before. You are conscientious, we leave you now, my friends. I am raw, I leave you in the love and the light of the infinite creator, go forth, rejoicing merrily in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai. Session 37, March 12, 1981. I am Ra, I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite creator we communicate now. Question, you said that each third density entity has a higher self in the sixth density, which is moving to the mind-body-spirit complex of the entity as needed. Does this higher self also evolve in growth through the densities beginning with the first density, and does each higher self have a corresponding higher self advanced in densities beyond it? Ra, to simplify this concept is our intent. The higher self is a manifestation given to the late six-density mind-body-spirit complex as a gift from its future selfness. The mid-seventh density last action before turning towards the allness of the Creator and gaining spiritual mass is to give this resource to the sixth density self, moving as you measure time in the stream of time. This self, the mind-body-spirit complex of the late sixth density, has then the honor, duty of using both the experience of its total living bank of memory of experience, thoughts, and actions, and using the resource of the mind-body-spirit complex totality left behind is a type of infinitely complex thought form. In this way, you may see yourself, your higher self or over-self, and your mind-body-spirit complex totality as three points in a circle. The only distinction is out of your time-space continuum, all are the same being. Question. Does each entity have an individual mind-body-spirit complex totality, or do a number of entities share the same mind-body-spirit complex totality? Ra, both of these statements are correct given the appropriate time-space conditions. Each entity has its totality, and at the point of which a planetary entity becomes a social memory complex, the totality of this union of entities also has its oversoul and its social memory complex totality as resource, as always, the sum, spiritually speaking, is greater than the sum of its parts, so that the oversoul of a social memory complex is not the sum of the oversouls of its members' entities, but operates upon the way of what we have called squares, and what we grasp that you prefer to call doubling. Question. Thank you. And thank you for the explanation of the mathematics, too. Could you define spiritual mass? Ra. This will be the last full question of this session. Spiritual mass is that which begins to attract the outgoing and ongoing vibratory oscillation of beingness into the gravity, speaking in a spiritual sense, well of the great central sun, core, or creator of the infinite universe. Question. Since we don't want to tire the instrument, I will just ask if there is anything we can do to make the instrument more comfortable. Ra, all is well. We leave you now in the love and light of the one infinite creator. Go forth then, rejoicing in the power and peace of the one infinite creator, Adonai. Session 38, March 13, 1981. I am Ra, I greet you in the love and light of the one infinite creator we communicate now. Question. Backtracking just a little bit today, I would like to know if the reason nuclear energy was brought into this density 40 or so years ago had anything to do with giving the entities who were here who had caused the destruction of Maldek another chance to use nuclear energy peacefully rather than destructively. 
Ra, this is incorrect in that it's places, places cart before horses, as your people say. The desire for this type of information attracted this data to your people. It was not given for a reason from outside influencers. Rather, it was desired by your people. From this point forward, your reasoning is correct in that entities had desired the second chance which you mentioned. Question. What was the mechanism for fulfilling the desire for the information regarding nuclear energy? Ra. As we understand your query, the mechanism was what you may call inspiration. Question. Would this inspiration be an entity impressing the person desiring the information with thoughts? Would this be the mechanism of inspiration? Ra. The mechanism of inspiration involves an extraordinary faculty of desire or will to know or to receive in a certain area accompanied by the ability to open to and trust in what you may call intuition. Question. Could you tell me how each of the rays, red through violet, would appear in a perfectly balanced and undistorted entity? Ra. We cannot tell you this, for each balance is perfect and each unique. We do not mean to be obscure. Let us offer an example. In a particular entity, let us use as an example a wander. The rays may be viewed as extremely even, red, orange, yellow. The green ray is extremely bright. This is, shall we say, balanced by a dimmer indigo. Between these two, the pointing of balance resides. The blue ray of the communicator sparkling in strength above the ordinary. In the violet ray, we see this unique spectrograph, if you will, and at the same time the pure violet surrounding the whole. This in turn surrounded by that which mixes the red and violet ray, indicating the integration of mind, body, and spirit. This surrounded in turn by the vibratory pattern of this entity's true density. This description may be seen to be both unbalanced and in perfect balance. The latter understanding is extremely helpful in dealing with other selves. The ability to feel blockages is useful only to the healer. This is not properly a tiny function of judgment when viewing a balance in colors. Of course, when we see many of the energy plexi weakened and blocked, we may understand that an entity has not yet grasped the baton and begun the race. However, the potentials are always there. All the rays fully balanced are there in waiting to be activated. Perhaps another way to address your query is this. In the fully potentiated entity, the rays mount one upon the other with equal vibratory brilliance and scintillating sheen until the surrounding color is white. This is what you may call potentiated balance in third density. Question. Is it possible for a third density planet to form a social memory complex which operates in third density? Ra. It is possible only in the latter or seventh portion of such a density when entities are harmoniously readying for graduation. Question. Could you give me an example of a planet of this nature? Both a third density service to other type and a third density service to self type at this level of attainment. Ra, as far as we are aware, there are no negatively oriented third density social memory complexes. Positively oriented social memory complexes of third density are not unheard of, but quite rare. However, an entity from the star Sirius planetary body has approached this planetary body twice. This entity is late third density and is a part of the third density social memory complex. This has been referred to in the previous material. The social memory complex is properly a fourth density phenomena. Question. I was wondering if that particular social memory complex from the Sirius star evolved from trees. Ra. This approaches correctness. Those second density vegetation forms which graduated into third density upon this planet, bearing the name of dog, were close to the tree as you know it. Question. I was wondering, since action of a bellicose nature is impossible as far as I understand vegetation, would they not have the advantage as they move into third density from second to not carry a racial memory of bellicose nature and therefore develop a more harmonious society and accelerate their evolution in this nature? Ra, this is correct. However, to become balanced and to begin to polarize properly, it is then necessary to investigate movements of all kind, especially bellicosity. Question. 
I am assuming then that their investigation of bellicosity were primarily of the type that they extracted from Hickson's memory rather than warfare among themselves. Ra, this is correct. Entities of this heritage would find it nearly impossible to fight. Indeed, their studies of movements of all kinds in this form of meditation due to the fact that their activity is upon the level of what you would call meditation and thus must be balanced, just as your entities need constant movement of meditation to balance their activities. Question. I believe that this is an important point for us in understanding the balancing aspect of meditation, since we have here its antithesis in another type of evolution. These entities moved, we are told by Charlie Hickson, without moving their legs. I am assuming that they used a principle that is somewhat similar to the principle of moving of your crystal bells in the movement of the physical vessels. Is this correct? Ra, this is partially incorrect. Questioner, I am assuming that their method of movement is not a function of mechanical leverage such as ours, but a direct function of the mind somehow connected with the magnetic action of the planet. Is this right? Ra, this is largely correct. It is an electromagnetic phenomena which is controlled by thought impulses of a weak electrical nature. Question. Would their craft have been visible to anyone on our planet in that area at the time? Is it of a third density material like this chair? Ra, this is correct. Please ask one more full question before we close that this instrument has low vital energy at this space-time. Question. Could you give me some idea of what conditions are like on a fourth density negative or service to self planet? Ra, the graduation into fourth density negative is achieved by those beings who have consciously contacted intelligent infinity through the use of red, orange, and yellow rays of energy. Therefore, the planetary conditions of fourth density negative includes the constant alignment and realignment of entities in efforts to form dominant patterns of combined energy. The early, fourth density, is one of the most intense struggle. When the order of authority has been established, and all have fought until convinced that each is in the proper placement for power structure, the social memory complex begins. Always the fourth density effect of telepathy and the transparency of thought are attempted to be used for the sake of those at the apex of the power structure. This, as you may see, is often quite damaging to the further polarization of fourth density negative entities. For the further negative polarization can come about only through group effort. As the fourth density entities manage to combine, they then polarize through such service to self as those offered by the Crusaders of Orion. You may ask more specific questions in the next session of working. Are there any brief queries before we leave this instrument? Question. I would like to ask if there is anything that we can do to make the instrument more comfortable. Ra, all is well. We leave you in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. Go forth rejoicing in the power and the peace of the one creator, Adonai.